Hello and welcome back to Ordinary Differential Equations, the video series where we talk a lot about the theory of differential equations and how to apply it. And indeed, in today's part 25, we will look at a concrete example for the solution of a system of linear differential equations. In particular, this will be an example of a matrix which is not diagonalizable. However, as always, before we start with the discussion, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, as a supporter you have access to a lot of additional material, which you can find with the link in the description. And now without further ado, let's immediately start by stating our general assumption. Namely, we consider the ordinary differential equation given as x dot is equal to ax where A is an n times n matrix. So it's a whole system and moreover we already know if we have an initial value then there is exactly one solution. So let's say that the initial value condition is given as x at the time 0 is given as x0. So this simply means that we fix a point in the space Rn. And now we already know that the unique solution is given by the matrix exponential. So more concretely, we have that the time t is mapped to the matrix exponential e to the power ta. And then this matrix is multiplied by the vector x0 from the right hand side. In other words, the only thing we have to do is to calculate this matrix exponential and then we have the whole solution. And now we have already learned in the last video that if this matrix A is diagonalizable, then the matrix exponential is quite easy to calculate. Therefore, the general question should be, how can we calculate the matrix exponential if A is not diagonalizable? And in fact, it's always possible by using the so-called Jordan normal form. So the key thing is to use this Jordan normal form and I have discussed a lot about it in my abstract linear algebra course. So you can definitely check that out if you want to learn more about the theory of the Jordan normal form. So in this video series we will just apply the Jordan normal form, but before we go into the general setting, I first want to show you an example. Indeed, this video is all about an example calculation. And to keep everything focused, we already assume that A is given in the Jordan normal form. This means that A is given as a block diagonal structure. And moreover, it's also an upper triangular matrix which means on the diagonal we find the eigenvalues of A. And the only thing we are allowed to find above the eigenvalues are some ones. And now you should see we can put everything into two blocks and the first one is the one corresponding to the eigenvalue 2. And the second one just corresponds to the eigenvalue 3. Therefore we say we first have our Jordan block 1 and on the other hand we have the Jordan block 2. They could have different sizes, but in this case they have the same size. However, the blocks are indeed different because inside them we find different shapes of boxes. So as you can see, the first one here contains two Jordan boxes. So the whole block can be separated into smaller boxes, but the second block only has one box in it. And as you can see, the ones above the diagonal determine how many boxes we have in the blocks. So this can make a whole difference in the Jordan normal form, but now we just want to calculate the matrix exponential for this given matrix. And as you already know, for that we just need to calculate the powers of the matrix A. And for that this block diagonal structure is really helpful. Simply because we can calculate the powers of the blocks separately. You should immediately see that when you multiply A with itself. Therefore for the whole calculation now we can consider the blocks separately. And maybe let's start with the simple one, let's start with Jordan block 2. And in order to get a feel for the powers, let's first consider the case k is equal to 2. This means we just have to calculate a standard matrix matrix multiplication. And then it's not hard to see that we have the squares of 3 on the diagonal. And above the diagonal we have 3 plus 3 here and there. And finally in the corner we find 1. So that's it, maybe it looks more complicated, but what you should see is that we still have our triangular structure. And in fact by induction we can show that we have this triangular form for all powers of the Jordan block. 
However, as you might already see, just multiplying like that is not so clever because we should use the structure we have in our Jordan block. This means we should separate our diagonal matrix from the rest. And now the good thing is that this rest only consists of ones above the diagonal. This results in the fact that the powers of this matrix are easy to calculate. So let's call the first matrix here D and the second one N. And the first one stands for a diagonal matrix and the second one for a nilpotent matrix. And the term nilpotent is easy to explain, it just means that some power of N is equal to the zero matrix. In fact, in this case it's easy to see, because n squared is already really simple. Namely, as you can calculate, it's the matrix that has zeros with the exception of the corner in the right top part, which is a 1. And therefore, what we immediately get is that n cubed is the zero matrix already. And then obviously, all higher powers are zero as well. So this is what you can remember, for a nilpotent matrix, we only have finitely many powers which are non-trivial. And now the second ingredient we need is that the two matrices D and N commute. This is not hard to show at all because we just have to do the two matrix multiplications. So let's do it explicitly, here the first column is just the zero vector. Then the second column is 3, 0, 0. And the third column is 0, 3, 0. And now let's do the opposite, let's calculate n times d. Also here, not so complicated, the first column is just the zero vector again. Second column is 3, 0, 0. And the last column is 0, 3, 0. So we have exactly the same result, and therefore the two matrices d and n commute. And this is a really helpful result, because this is what we can use for our matrix exponential. So what we want to calculate is e to the power t times d plus n. Indeed, this one is our original Jordan block, but now we can split the exponential up. Namely, we have e to the power t d times e to the power t n. We know we can do that if the two matrices commute. And now you see, what we get are two matrix exponentials, which are easy to calculate. The first one is easy to calculate because our matrix D is diagonal, and there we already know we just have to use the exponential on the diagonal. And moreover, the second factor here is easy to calculate because N is a nilpotent matrix. This means that this infinite power series for the exponential is actually just a finite sum. In fact, for our example, we already know it stops at N squared. Therefore, I would say, let's simply calculate the two matrix exponentials. The first one is a diagonal matrix with e to the power 3t on the diagonal. And the second one is just a finite sum, and we know it starts with the identity matrix. Then comes the linear term t times n. And finally, already the last one, which is 1 half t squared n squared. So it's a really simple 3 times 3 matrix, which has t, and t squared in it. So if you want, we can just write it down. We have ones on the diagonal. And then you should see on top of the diagonal, we have t and in the corner, we have our one half t squared. That's the whole thing. And now we can multiply it with the diagonal matrix to get the whole matrix exponential. And there you see, this does not change so much. It just brings the exponential functions in. The first column stays the same. And in the second column, we get our t times e to the power 3t. Indeed, this is not a surprise. This is actually what we have expected to find in our general solution. However, in this case, we also find the term 1 half t squared times the exponential function e to the power 3t as well. So what we see in the end is that the matrix exponential for a Jordan block is easy to calculate. It's not too complicated because we still have our triangular form. However, in order to find the whole solution, we have to do it for all the Jordan blocks. Therefore, the next part would be to do exactly the same thing for the first Jordan block 1. So there we have our Jordan block and now we do exactly the same thing as before, which means we split it up into two parts where one is diagonal and the other one nilpotent.
In fact, the nilpotent part here is really simple, because there's only one one involved. So if we say that this is our n tilde, then n tilde squared is already the zero matrix. Hence we don't have to do much here, because the nilpotent part only has the linear term in the matrix exponential. Therefore I would say, we can quickly solve our matrix exponential for d tilde and n tilde. Also there, it's not hard to show at all that they commute, so we can split the exponential up. Therefore what we get is first the diagonal part with e to the power 2t, and the second part where we only have the identity matrix 1 plus t n tilde. And now we can simply do the multiplication as before, and we get the following. We have the same on the diagonal, and at the one spot we have t times e to the power 2t as well. And there we have it, the only thing that remains now is to put both Jordan blocks together again. So in fact, the result we get is our matrix exponential for the matrix A. But there of course the order of the Jordan blocks matters, because we have this one as the first Jordan block and the other one as the second one. In other words, we have a 6 times 6 matrix in block form again. However, as already noted, inside the blocks it could look more complicated than before. But the result is still there, we got the general solution by considering the matrix exponential. And now you know, for any Jordan normal form, the calculation works like we have shown it before. Of course, this was just an example, but you might already believe me that it works similarly in a general setting. But as always, this is something we have to prove. So I would say, let's do that with the next videos. So I really hope I meet you again, and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.